Backchat TV. Subscribe. Welcome to Backcheck TV. I don't normally cover UFC, but I'm going to start covering a lot more UFC uh, in the future. Um, I thought I'll start with just talking about um, UFC 292. Um, there are some good fights on this card, and I thought I'd just very briefly speak about a few of them and just give a prediction for for who I think is going to win. Um, I'm excited to see Sterling versus Amali. I like both fighters. I'm really torn between the two because I feel like Sean O'Malley, I feel like he's a superstar. I feel like there's a potential of him becoming a superstar. You know, people love strikers like uh, Adesanya and, uh, you know, even people further back in the past. Really good strikers have been exciting to watch. Um, obviously, we think of the names of like Conor McGregor, exciting uh, strikers, Anderson Silva, you know, um, there's been a lot of good fighters, but strikers often get a lot more attention. I don't know why, something more exciting about them. Um, Sean O'Malley has the potential to become a superstar if he, if he beats Sterling, because I think Sterling is the best bantamweight of all time, to be honest, if you look at all the people he's beaten. And if Sean O'Malley was to come along and win, I think he becomes, you know, he's getting to that superstar uh, status. I think he becomes a superstar. The reason for that is uh, he's got a very calm, cold demeanor. You know, he's he's quite funny as well. He's very different, you know, with the different color hair and the tattoos and things like that. And the whole Sugar Shane thing, I can see that whole thing becoming a brand. And, um, you know, I just, I just feel like he is has the potential to be a star in the making. I love his striking. I love his precision striking. Uh, you know, he doesn't uh, telegraph any of his shots. He could potentially be an extremely exciting fighter to win. If he, if he wins this fight, all eyes are going to be on Sean O'Malley. Um, when we look at Sterling now, Sterling is the more grounded fighter. You know, he's the more established fighter fought a lot of different former champions, beating champions, beating a lot of people that people didn't think Sterling would beat. He's got a lot better. You know, his wrestling obviously is A1, but he does have deceptively good striking. Um, he also has good reflexes, you know, and he knows what to do in certain situations. And he's just very um, seasoned. He's just a very seasoned fighter. And um, I think this is probably going to be Sean O'Malley's undoing. Um, because of the experience of Sterling. If if Sean O'Malley doesn't catch Sterling with something in the first round, because he is a sniper and he is definitely capable of it, and if it goes, you know, a few rounds and uh, he allows himself to be taken down a few times, I see Sterling winning. Um, Sean O'Malley might just be a little bit too one-dimensional um, with the striking and he may need this loss against uh, an opponent like Sterling, an experienced opponent like Sterling, to develop his grappling and develop his takedown defense and things like that to to then become a star. Maybe he needs to go the long way around, because sometimes when you just have this natural talent, like I think Sean O'Malley has, you sometimes have to get found out at the top level against a more durable kind of experienced fighter, and I feel like that might happen to Sean O'Malley. Um, yeah, I don't know what people think about that, but. Sterling, if you look at Sterling's resume, you know, he, he's got a good chin. He's fought some tough fights. He he knows how to transition between those takedowns and strikings, and he can make it very difficult for Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley hasn't been in the tough fights yet. He hasn't felt the power, the strength, the physical conditioning that you need. He hasn't felt what it feels like to be taken down multiple times and not be able to catch someone who's very quick, good reflexes, and he hasn't felt that level yet. So I'm worried that he may lose because of that. 
But I think if he does lose, he's only going to come back stronger. I, I, I feel like if he loses a close fight, a decision, a uh, loss to Sterling, I think he's going to be unbeatable after that because he's one of these people, Sean O'Malley, he learns quickly. If you do something to him before, you can't do it again. He's now wary of what you're doing. He's got those reflexes. He's got that sniper type of uh, you know, skill, skill set. And I feel like he'll only get better from a loss. Um, who's going to win? I'm really not sure. I'm torn between the two. I've been thinking about it. I'm torn between the two. Um, I don't know, man. I really don't know. I feel, I don't know why, but something is telling me that Sean O'Malley is a star in the making. I feel like he's going to catch Sterling with something. And I don't know if it's going to be enough to put him out um, or it's just going to be enough to buzz Sterling. But I feel like he might buzz Sterling. I feel like Sterling is going to get his chin tested here because Sean O'Malley is a great striker very precision striker he's not emotional in there and um you know that's that's the very difficult person to beat um but i think on this occasion i have to go with the tried and tested sterling i think he's got a lot of tools and that whole backpack thing is you know nothing to play with we've seen him do it to some top fighters and you know i think sean o'mine is going to be no exception so I'm going to have to... I'm, I don't want to sit on the fence on any of these fights. I'm going to go with Sterling for the win. Probably a, a submission. Most likely, rear naked choke. You know, no surprises there. So, Sterling for the win. Uh, Whaley against Lemos. Whaley is a great fighter. Everybody knows that. Former champion. Um, she's got some amazing knockout wins and I think a lot of people would probably be back in Whaley but I'm going to go for Lemos in this I th I feel like Lemos is I feel like uh, she's so athletic naturally I feel that Lemos is the most naturally gifted fighter at this weight um, even though she hasn't got the accomplishments of Whaley there, this is kind of like a, an opposite to what I was saying about Sterling with the experience and Sean O'Malley not really having the experience yet, just having talent. I feel like it's the opposite. I feel like Wei Li has the experience in this case, but Lemos, the person who I'm actually going to go for to win, I feel like she is the most athletic. She's one of the most athletic fighters I've seen. Sharp reflexes, hard hitting, uh, real sniper. I feel like Wei Li is very strong. But she makes too many mistakes for someone as slick as Lemos. I really do. I've watched them both fight. And I feel like Whaley's going to make that little mistake where she's got a shorter reach. She's going to overextend. And Lemos is going to catch her with one, two or three right hands somewhere along the line. Because I've watched Lemos and I think she is just so sharp. Very, very sharp. Look out for Lemos. She's, she's on the up. Um... But can she take Wei Li's pressure and constant hard-hitting punching and strength and taking her down and stuff? I'm not sure. Wei Li is really a, a very uh, talented fighter and I would not be surprised if she wins. So I'm going for the upset. I'm not sure who's the favourite in this fight, to be honest. But I'm going for Lemos for the upset. I just feel like she's a star in the making as well. Let's go on to the... Weidman versus Tavares. Um, I like Weidman. Um, always liked him. I feel like he's just been very unlucky in his career. He's come up either against the best in the division at the time or he's had an injury and just uh, suffering from a, an injury from before or something. He's just been very unlucky. He hasn't really got to the standard that maybe he should have. Uh, and I feel, unfortunately, he's come up against Tavares at the wrong time again. You know, he's rushed back. Well, he took a long time off uh, from his injury with it, with the foot. Um, but if you look at the injury, man, I just don't... I, I feel like that injury is a career-ending injury. You know, um, he may prove me wrong. He may feel great in training. But his desire to get back in the ring, I don't think is going to be matched by his physical ability to be able to to actually uh, get a win here. Because I feel like when you're really under pressure, and Tavares is going to put him under a lot of pressure that's when these injuries come back, you know? They always come back when you're under pressure. They always give out when you need it the most. And, I mean, uh, I'm not trying to be negative uh, negative on Weidman, but, you know, he has a lot of things against him. His age, his inactivity, and obviously the elephant in the room, 
that injury. That injury, like I said, I think it was career ending. Um, you may feel great afterwards, but once you're under pressure, I'm not convinced that his body's going to hold up. Um, so I, I give Tavares the win here. And I think Weidman will be disappointed, but at least he's giving it another go. I think that sometimes when people you know, are natural fighters and uh, they have a situation where they can't fight, they just want to prove to themselves that they can get back in there. And I feel like... Although Weidman will be um, disappointed with a loss, I think he'll be happy that he gave it another go. I think he just needs to feel, you know, can he, can he do it? He's probably been in training and, he, and his leg's been okay, you know, and uh, he wants to know if he can do it. And sometimes it's just like closure. I feel like he's probably at this point of his career, he just wants closure. You know, if he wins, he can go forward and keep fighting and, and uh, you know, really fulfil his talent. Uh, if he loses, he's going to know that, that's it and I think he'll be I think he'll accept it but I don't think he'll be happy I don't think he'll be happy unless you know he gives it his best and that's what I think he's trying to do unfortunately he can't come up come up against uh, you know someone who's just up and coming or just some kind of a no-name person just to get the ring rust off him you know I don't think he can do that because obviously they want a good card so they've put him against a good fighter like Tavares unfortunately I see Tavares beating him. Um, it's a shame. I think it's the end of an era for Weidman. Unfortunate uh, all throughout his career with injuries and things like that. But uh, this is how life goes sometimes. And I do think he's an amazing uh, commentator. So I do think that, you know, he's always going to have a connection to, to fighting. But you can tell that he loves it and that's why he's come back. Um, but unfortunately, like I said, I've got Tavares beating Weidman. Just to recap, I've got Sterling beating... O'Malley just because of the it's being a seasoned experienced fighter I don't think O'Malley has uh, fought anyone that's going to be so difficult to hit and going to be so tricky you know I don't think he's seen that yet and I feel like he needs to see that to become the star that he's meant to be um, I, I, I'm, I'm tipping Lemos against Wei Ling but that could definitely backfire and go the other way and we'll briefly talk about uh, Neil Magny and, and, and Gary. Um, that's a difficult one because Gary, I feel like he's an up-and-coming star. Young, um, you know, explosive fighter. But I feel like he makes mistakes as well. I feel like uh, as a young fighter coming up, I feel like a little bit like Sean O'Malley and Sterling. He may fall victim to the experience of uh, Neil Magny and uh, I mean don't get me wrong um, I like uh, Ian Gary I think he's a really good prospect like I said but um, I feel like uh, Magny is a very slight operator um, he's got deceptive power he's got deceptive reflexes he seems a bit slow in there but he's quite deliberate in how he does things and I can see Gary kind of be Gary's a little bit gun ho He's a little bit, uh, he has that kind of young inexperience. You know, he's the kind of person that will overextend and, and get caught with something, you know. So, I don't know. I feel like I'm going to go for Neil Magny, just the experience again. I'm going for a lot of experience in, in, this, uh, in these matchups. And last but not least, uh, we're going to go on to um, Marlon Vera. He's not fighting Cejudo. <laughs> he's not fighting Cejudo, like it says on this on this picture. Uh, he's actually fighting uh, Pedro Pedro Munio. That's going to be a good fight. Pedro Munio is a great tactician. I feel like I feel like Marlon is going to be the the bigger fighter. He's bigger than Munio. I think he's stronger than Munio. And uh, I don't know. I, I feel like Munio is quite durable, though. He is a good fighter. And I'm really not sure, but I think I'd have to go for Marlon Vera in this. I think he's going to be a bit too powerful, a bit too strong. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was a decision because I feel like Munoz is a very, a very tough, durable fighter. And I wouldn't be surprised if, if he actually takes the win. You know, he's a, he's a tough guy. Uh, I think he's just a little bit... He's a, a little bit smaller. I think the power is coming from Vera more. Uh, more than Munio, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna favour Marlon Vera in this one. So just to recap, I've got Marlon Vera beating Pedro Munio. I've got Sterling beating O'Malley, which is a shame because I like O'Malley. I've got Lemos um, beating uh, Wei Li, and I've got Neil Magny beating Ian Gary. 
Now, just a disclaimer, I could totally be wrong about some of these picks. Uh, I'm really torn between uh, between Ian Gary, uh, Ian Gary and Neil Magny. I'm not sure really who's going to win that. Definitely, I feel like Gary has the, the talent, but I feel like Neil has the experience and, I, and I'm going to favour experience, so I'm going to stick with that. But I could very easily be wrong on that one. Um, the Wei Lee... Wei Li is a great fire. I could easily be wrong about that. But when I watch Limos, it's like poetry in motion. I love the way she moves. And I just, uh, she's a rising star. So I'm just going to pick her. I love the way she fights. Let me know what you think of my of my picks. Do I know what I'm talking about? Am I totally wrong about everything and everyone that I've picked? Let me know what your pick uh, would be in the comment section. I'm going to enjoy the card either way. Um, can't wait to watch these fights. Let me know how you feel about the these fights and what your prediction would be in the comment section. I'm on to the next one. Backtrack TV. Subscribe.